Hi guys, this is John from Meatristics University and this is Deli Meats 201, Restructuring Smaller Cuts. In the first series of Deli Meats, we covered some basic additives, some tips for buying, and how to make fresh whole muscle deli roast beef. Now we're gonna get into restructured deli meats and some of the science behind that. Now for restructured deli meats, there are two main ways you can process them. The first is to take larger cuts of meat and bind them together. And the other is to completely break it down and then mold it into whatever shape you want. In both of these processes, one of the main things we're gonna rely upon is solubilizing the proteins from the muscle inside the meat, and then using that to bind the separate parts together into one cohesive piece or loaf. Now, some processors will use transglutaminase, which acts as a meat glue, and there are all sorts of opinions on this practice, with some people disapproving it, and even saying that it misleads the consumer. Now, according to the USDA, it's considered grass, which stands for generally regarded as safe. This is directly from the USA website. Transglutaminase is an enzyme approved for use as a binder to form smaller cuts of meat into a larger serving of meat. It's a natural substance derived from fermented bacteria, a non-toxic and non-pathogenic strain of organism. So I'll post a link directly to that article so you can read it because there is some good information in it and some people might want to avoid it. However, it's hard to get and it's extremely expensive. And luckily, you don't need transglutaminase to make reformed deli meat. So we're gonna show you how to make it without any. Now, if you watched any of our videos on making a cured sausage product like a snack stick or summer sausage, you know one of the things we often bring up is protein extraction. You can often tell when you've achieved the correct level of protein extraction when the meat mixture becomes sticky and tacky. What we're gonna be relying on is the same function here to bind your meat together. Now, if you wanna make deli meat from a larger piece, then we suggest you take 10% of whatever your meat block is and grind that twice through a 1 8 inch plate. The rest, we suggest you cut into small enough pieces that will easily fit through your stuffing tube and you can stuff it into a casing. So if you had 10 pounds of chicken breast, we'd suggest you grind one pound of that and then cut the other nine pounds into just smaller cuts. If you don't care about the appearance, then we suggest you just grind it all twice through a 1 8 plate, almost like you're making a summer sausage. If you're doing this though, remember you're gonna need to use some sort of binder like carrot fiber or super bind because chicken breast is so low in fat. The first thing we need to do is solubilize the myofibrillar proteins in the meat. And then we need to extract those proteins from the muscle cells. Both of these processes are gonna require salt being added to the meat at some point. Generally, it's a good idea to inject your solution into the meat, let it marinate for a while to allow the salt time to work on the muscle, or you can use a vacuum tumbler if you have one, as this will speed up the process with both the mechanical energy of the dropping of the meat from the top to the bottom of the drum and the vacuum slightly pulling apart the fibers of the meat. Now, because we want this meat to hold as much water as possible, we wanna choose a marinade that has some phosphate in it, as this will increase the water holding capacity of the meat by changing the pH and allowing the water molecules to form a tighter bond. Once these proteins have been extracted from the meat and are coating the outside of the muscle, they'll become sticky and you can start to hold together the pieces of the meat with it. Now you can form it into any desired shape, though until you've heat treated it, you could easily pull the pieces apart. They won't become one piece until we heat treat the product. For the home user, one of the easiest things to do is stuff it very tightly into either a loaf casing, or I also like these large bologna red casings. Just be aware that you need to stuff this as tight as possible or it won't bind properly. That's one of the reasons we like these casings since they're so strong. Now commercial processors are gonna use a vacuum stuffer for this, which is gonna be way tighter than we could ever hope to do with a hand crank stuffer. Now if you don't get it stuffed tightly enough, you can have voids in the deli meat, or you might have sections that just don't bond properly together at all. And some voids are gonna be almost unavoidable with the hand crank stuffer. So if you have a few empty spaces, it's not a big deal. Smoking or any type of cooking of this type of deli meat is a little bit different than normal smoking, as the, once the proteins have denatured, no more smoke is gonna adhere. So we need to have an initial drying stage that's gonna equalize all the heat in there. If you're only using one loaf, you don't really need this stage. You can just go to your normal drying phase. After that quick drying phase, 
and everything's nice and tacky, the next stage we're gonna start heavy smoke and we're gonna keep the temperature somewhat similar to the drying phase. Also, we're not adding a cure to this, so we don't have the luxury of keeping the temperature of the smoker at low periods for long times. For an uncured chicken breast like this, we're gonna wanna get it to 180 degrees with 100% relative humidity if we can as quickly as possible, certainly within the first 30 minutes. During this step, the temperature is gonna start denaturing the proteins and make them bind together. So simply put, increased heat forces the molecules of the meat to vibrate fast enough that they break their previous bonds and precipitate. Now that doesn't mean they start raining. Chemically speaking, precipitate means to form a solid from a solution. Now we will have what will look like one solid piece of deli meat that's just made up of multiple pieces of chicken breast. You can still see pretty clearly that there are multiple pieces, but the small amount that we ran twice through a 1 8 inch plate, along with the proteins that we extracted from the whole muscle, is acting as a glue to keep everything bond together. And when we simply grind it all, you can see that it just got a consistency very similar to summer sausage, but still able to slice it pretty thin. As always, remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and visit waltonsinc.com and meatjustics.com to find everything but the meat. Thanks for watching. I'm John with Meatjustics University, and I'll see you guys next time. Subscribe to Walton's YouTube channel to watch more amazing videos, or shop at waltonsinc.com to find everything but the meat. Check out our latest sales and giveaway video here, or watch another hand-picked video by clicking here.